Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful Monday morning for this week's boardroom meeting. Now, just recently, a few days ago, I posted a video in the Kingpinning Facebook group that was talking about survivallife.com. And I, I was using it as an example of a really great digital business that's doing all the pieces out there to, that you should be when you're trying to attack and grow your business online. And Today, I want to kind of show you how we're mimicking that kind of process, that layout, and what we're doing, our focus here in 2017 is for attacking the farm industry and really taking it over. Um, now, as you guys have probably know, over the past few years, we've been launching all types of niches out there, really a huge range, but one of our first successes was the, the cows and the pigs and the goats and those farm animal niches that really took off for us in the beginning. Now, over two and a half, three years here of launching products consistently in these niches, we're growing very large audiences and assets that really range a wide spectrum of cow fans and people who like cows. For example, our Cows Are Awesome page. That was started like two, three years ago. It's up to about 250,000 likes now. And at first, we just thought it would be all dairy farmers and cow people who actually have cows. And over the first year, we realized that when you actually post something that's any cow farm related, you have a lot of people who are really cow enthusiasts who don't like that side of the spectrum. So we had to find our balance there and see, okay, well, this is just a cow enthusiast fan page. Let's see how we can talk to each group of people individually. Now, over time, we've been able to kind of separate who just like cows and then who are the actual dairy farmers or the pig farmers or the goat farmers and all those different pieces. And as those audiences grow, we're able to jump into all the other very lucrative angles of the farmer industry because really farm animals is just a very, very small corner of this industry when really farm and farming is a gigantic multiple, multiple, you know, couple hundred million reach worldwide of farmers, I'd say. Um, we probably got a good 30 to 50 million reach here just in the U.S. of people who are interested in into farming on some level. Even, you know, we're talking, we started the farm animal niche, but we're spreading out to people who actually are raising the cattle. And then we jump into the people who are, are growing the wheat or the tobacco or the corn or whatever it may be. And then we can jump into the people who are doing the do-it-yourself uh, do stuff at home with chicken coops or or beehives, or any of those different angles, organic farming. There's so many different angles out there. You even seen, uh, uh, God, what is it called? The farmer dating site, farmersonly.com. That's, I've seen commercials for that online. If people are spending money for commercials, you know that's a very large audience. And so that's kind of the idea here. We're jumping into all those aspects, reaching out, using the assets we started with to be able to kind of move one piece at a time, hitting these other angles. Since we have such large audiences, we built with just farm animal enthusiasts, we're gonna be able to hit a small pocket of them and start growing our farm uh, sites and our farm uh, other assets in the, in the market. So let's go ahead and break down kind of the plan here in 2017, how we're going to take the digital aspect of the farm ministry. Now, as you guys have seen, I've talked about here, uh, the farm animal store is where we started. This is just a simple Shopify store, print on demand products, very simple stuff. Now, pretty much for this, we're breaking it down into... I've, you've probably seen me talk about it a little bit more. Is we have we're talking to each individual audience for wherever the message is coming from. So if we're talking to cow enthusiasts overall, like in the cows are awesome page, we're not really talking to farmers on there. We're making sure that our voice is being heard to the cow enthusiasts. But we know farmers are on that page, so we have other assets that talk to more the dairy farmer side of that. So with our social media, we have a store social media, which is the farm animal enthusiast. Uh, store. This has its own brand social media going at all times. The Facebook and Instagram is really specific to this one. We've done Twitter a little bit in the past. We're adding Pinterest in here in the near future, but Facebook and Instagram are our main ones. We're always consistently working. Um, now we have our other farm animal assets going with our fan pages, like I just talked about, individually split. We have our news newsletters attached to this. So these are the prospect newsletters that are sending autoresponders and broadcasts to get them into our farm animal store create them into 
buyers, and then we can really separate who's who from there. Um, we have free plus shipping in our giveaway funnels going on a monthly basis. I've talked about here this last month, especially in the boardroom uh, a training events here this month. We talked about email funnels for your e-commerce stores, and then we have our buyer list. So we have it separated by our cow buyers, our goat buyers, our pig buyers, our horse, chicken, sheep, whatever it may be. Um, and those are all our farm animal assets really going. And that's, again, one small, small pocket of this industry. Now, we have the farm animal reoccurring memberships in place. And this is kind of our main back-end offer for any of these passion type of niches. And that's what we're doing here in the farm animal uh, store is it's all passion niches, people who love cows and pigs or whatnot. So we have two set two different types of clubs for these, each of these niches, a t-shirt club, which is kind of a low end $20 a month membership. And then we have a box offer, which is our higher end $50 plus a month. They get a couple items and all those pieces. Now, we're putting in place warehouses. We're getting the local fulfillment for these in place. So really the whole idea when we're doing this and we're growing this in the long run is I want to sell this business off and these businesses, as you're going to see, as one entity and really get a good seven to eight figure payout for this. You know, I'm not a farmer. I don't really care about the farm industry. It just is where it started taking off for me. And it was one of the first things, first industries I'm able to really jump into on this scale because of these assets we started building. So that's the whole idea with this. And that's why we're getting the warehouse in place. We're getting employees that are long-term in place. So when we sell, they can just be handed off. One of the main things when you're selling a business is you want to get yourself out of the business. And one of the biggest problems with these Shopify stores and e-commerce is that we run everything usually. We're just a solo entrepreneur. But if you you want to sell your business off, you're going to be able to make a good five to 10 times more from that sale if you are not part of that business. Because if you are part of that business and the reason for its success, usually someone who buys your business at a high price, you know, 50,000 to 100,000 plus, especially you're talking seven to eight figures payout, they're going to want you on board for a portion of the time so that you can kind of smooth the transition. And I'm going to avoid that at every cost. I don't want to be, that's not my gig. I have multiple businesses I'm going, trying to sell off. I'm not going to work for someone else after I sell. The whole point is to be done with it. So that's why we're growing all these different assets out here, not just the store, not just the lists, not just the fan pages of each niche, but also the physical assets, the employee bases, the systems, the guidelines, the motto, you know, the whole thing, the mission statement of this business, what they're about. And that's why when I'm out here hiring and looking for people too, I'm looking for those who are in the farm niche and they love it. This is something they're passionate about themselves. It really helps with that. So, with this store, as you guys have probably seen many times, the plan is to launch consistently, find new winners, the weekly launch plan. Uh, we have the, the every farm animal niche we know. We try two to three products eat in that niche each week. Um, and if something takes off in that niche, we'll slow down. Maybe the launch is next week. Hold them off until the traffic kind of slows down so we won't have two pillows going up against each other. We might have a pillow and then we might have another product, a cutting board or you know something like that, socks going with it. Um, but same products we kind of will die out when whatever works, we really scale into it, push it hard. Uh, next off, we have the Farmer Authority site. Now, this is two different pieces. It's going to be an information site. We're going to be all those different topics I was talking about. We're going to jump into the farm, uh, dairy farming, chicken farming, the do-it-yourself beehives, all these different topics we're going to have content. It's going to be an authority pillar content type site where it's all search and optimize with keywords. It's for people looking, learning, wanting to learn how to, how to do farming, how to, it can be on the business side of things. We'll have, you know, just a normal news media site for the farm industry. And this is going to have lead-ins to our farm specific assets and our farm specific products. Now, one of those lead-ins, one of the main stores that are going to be with it is another print-on-demand store that's not farm animal-based, but it's farmer-based. They're two separate pieces, like I talked about. That fan, the Starting Cows Are Awesome fan page really taught me that, where I can't post a, you know, uh, a beef and uh, uh, an actual farmer picture of what goes on in a farm uh, with cows on that farm page because there's so many vegans and just cow enthusiasts who hate the way animals are treated. So we have to be careful with that. That's why we have these separate things where actual farmers have a different perspective on it. They have just a different look on those animals. It's a business and money-making opportunity to them. They want to be more efficient. Um, some people just do it to you know, have a fun project as a hobby. So that's really what we're going to be talking to and what we're going to be going on 
on a consistent plan of launching content, getting guest writers, hiring on some content writers and, and people to manage these assets. And that's going to be bringing people in to where we then have things like our prospect newsletters so and our and our, uh, our social media. So we'll have things like a I Love Farmer social media. We actually have those kind of going. I think we have about 25,000 fans on that right now, um, as, as well as a newsletter. Um, we'll have individual how-to topics that will be lead generation systems. So one email autoresponder that's specific to beehives, one specific to gardening, one specific to, uh, you know, the, the dairy farm industry and how to get your cows, I don't know, better price or whatever, uh, better the, the equipment that you should be using, good deals, just the same way I'm doing kind of with Kingpinning and stuff, showing people how things are done and giving them better solutions, being more efficient. I'm just going to apply a lot of the marketing side of things, as you'll see here in the farm business membership, the next piece on the back end here. And then also we have the farmer, uh, the brand newsletter, and that's going to be the store brand. This store, again, the Shopify store, it's two separate Shopify stores. This is farmer specific. So instead of cutesy, cartoony animal stuff, you're going to have the the uh the farmer kind of gritty more hardcore message that's more direct to the male audience where farm animals would definitely be more of a female but then also on this farm specific store farmer specific we're going to have the farmer wife angle the people who love a farmer so those are a little two separate entities too that we're going to market in both of these um, we're gonna have free plus shipping funnels going to this it's the same way it's just finding those appropriately priced products lead generation giveaway funnels always work really well um, we have the shopify store with the brand so social media as well as the niche social media so we'll have the I love a farmer I'm a farmer's wife social media and then we'll have the brand store going social media uh, the discount newsletter on all of our Shopify stores leading in that's just a conversion to get them on a buyer list sell our products then the buyer list is again the gold we can match these up with who bought our cow products and who bought our farmer products okay we know those are cow farmers or dairy farmers so those are little things you can do to match up your audiences later on um, this same store we're going to be launching Launching consistently to find winners. Again, like I said, we're launching consistent content on the site to make sure traffic is coming in, getting into our funnels that we're going to be able to convert them on. Um, and then we have a reoccurring box offer in this case too for the farmer wives. Um, thinking about here in the future, probably a farmer specific one too. The more nitty gritty, some tools and you know whatever cool shit that they can have there. Uh, so that that's a good angle there. So in this case, we have the farm animal side hit. We have the farmer and the farmer wife and the I love a farmer side hit. And then on the other side, we want to add some authority. So some other assets we're going to build to this, kind of like we saw in Survival Life and what Ryan Dice is doing over there at Native Commerce, uh, is we're going to have a an association website. We're going to create a, an official looking farmer association. He had the Family Protection Association. So I could I went and checked. FarmerProtectionAssociation.com was open. That might be a good one. I don't know if that's really fitting for the message where farmers have that tough feel. They don't need protection kind of thought. But then also, uh, they everyone feels attacked. So from the government, from other industries, from consumers, whatever it may be, competitors, um, that is maybe a good name for it. Well, we're going to play around with it and see something new, a three-syllable uh, acronym, FPA.com, just worked really great for the Family Protection Agency. I, I guess I'll have to change Farmer Protection Agent Association won't work because I want something different than FPA. Um, so that's going to be a good authority piece that's going to also have a digital membership to it, a $20 membership, and this will just be official farmer type of content things that are going to really help them move the legislation in their favor, maybe be more up to date on those type of topics, what's going on in policy changes in the in uh, politics with their local government, how they can act, different things like that, groups, um, you know, whatever it may be. This is something we haven't put in place yet, but that's what I'm doing this upcoming month. It's going to be a perfect authority branding piece. And then all these buyers, and of course, can be led into our, our other pieces, our boxes, our uh, farmer stores and uh, everything like that and vice versa and then lastly we have the farm business membership this is a membership site i'm creating that is 
all about the marketing. I'm just going to teach them the same things I'm teaching you guys and and uh, and kingpinning, except with the farm angle to, uh, to exposed to it. We have tools for apps, calendars, different things that they can use and just download and have that will help them make more money and make a better life for themselves with their farm uh, business they have. Because a lot of farmers are struggling. It's not a great producing for the how, amount of work coming from someone who has farmed quite a bit, come from a farming community um, through growing up up it's a tough life it's very tough to live that way and for the payout it's definitely uh not a great roi even though very respectable job and much needed so we want to help them make more from that and we started a lot with this with farmer market far the farming market uh farmer's market um having just Practices that you can do in your booth to make more money, get lead generation, have your pricing, uh, sales price, different stuff like that that we've put in place. And that's going to be where we start. And then we're going to move into other industries as we learn more. You know, I've been partnering up with some dairy farmers who are legitimate run like multi-million dollar dairy farms and really just kind of doing interviews with them about how you efficiently run your business, the tools, the practices, you know, the different things to keep up on, just all those different pieces, same type of concept we're doing here, except again, in the farm industry. So all of these are going to be going. Those are two more authority pieces. The farm business membership will be a good, again, another reoccurring membership that some of these other members, members and buyers are going to be able to link into. And this is just our digital takeover. From there, obviously, we want to start if, if it's liable uh, or viable, we want to get into retail stores, maybe with our apparel. If we get in some John Deere stores or something to have our products or be able to even take on their product line. Looking at FarmersOnly.com, the farmer's dating site, they have a an apparel site. I haven't looked at it in a while, but when I last looked at it, and it was horrible. The apparel looked horrible. It was very basic. The whole e-commerce setup was, was horrible. So we could reach out to them and take over their product line to have traffic, those little joint ventures coming and leading in. And then also, of course, the machinery and the, the cattle themselves and the livestock. Those are all pieces that we can set up funnels for or training programs and all that type of stuff to get into the physical market uh, as well as the digital empire we're growing here in the farm industry. So guys, that is the plan for 2017 of how we're taking over the farm industry, how really I'm trying to build something that I'll be able to sell for 10 million plus, uh, hopefully 50 million. You know, hold on a minute. Let's go 100 million. But uh, that is the plan we're doing here in 2017. Definitely just take notes of how you're doing. We start with one piece. It started with one t-shirt. Cows make me happy. You not so much. It created into a Shopify store, which we see here. And after the Shopify store for, run for a few years, we see this is how we separate it from brand. And then also the individual niches within the store. And then the same thing's happening in the entire farm industry. We're just breaking it down by niche. And then the separating those, the hierarchy of who's the individual person we're talking to from the source and matching it up correctly and then not leaving any cor corner unturned um, by talking to everyone in the industry and just going one piece at a time, growing your, your assets, your systems, getting people in place so that the first system you set up continues to run while you move on to the second system. And that's it. That's all you're doing on a consistent basis with patience. And you do that in five to 10 years, you're going to have a freaking mega business. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment below. Thank you again for joining me in the boardroom meeting here. I will see you next week and have a good one.